I want to share with you all the tips and tricks that I like to do when I'm coding in my VS Code editor. And I think learning some of these tricks can just help you become a much faster developer in general. So I have this code racer project opened up here. And as you can see, it has a lot of files. So the most important thing that you can learn when you're using VS Code is fuzzy searching. So if you know that there's a particular file or page, when you keep on having to dive through your file directory, it can be kind of annoying, especially if you're kind of familiar with the project. And if it's like a full-time job project, you're already familiar with most of the pages, right? So if you wanted to, you could simply do a command P on Mac, and I could say the name of the component or page that I'm thinking about. So I'll say like dashboard, and then I can say slash, and then I can say page. And that'll take you straight to the page that you want. So fuzzy search is by far probably the most important thing, and I use it all the time. Now, another super important one is command clicking, right? So if you're using TypeScript, you should have the ability to command click into various files like this, and that'll take you straight to the file. I think an alternative to command clicking is just do an F12, and that'll take you straight to the definition as well. Or if you want to, you can just right click on this and say go to definition, which I always have trouble finding. It's this one right here, go to the definition. Um, there's also go to implementation references, but go to definition or command clicking is probably the, the most important. Now, another super important thing is renaming things, right? So for example, this thing has a user variable here. And if I want to rename it in all the different places that we're using, what you do instead is you highlight the word, you do an F2, and you say current user. And that's going to refactor every instance in the application where it used to say user and now it'll say current user. Right, it's also worth mentioning that that refactor, if I were to go ahead and like try to rename this achievements variable, which is kind of imported as a named import here, or you can call that a named export, I guess. Same idea, just do an F12 and say like all achievements. And now notice on the left, there's actually five file changes because that export was imported in various pages. So that's a great way to like do a quick rename of a import or an export that works pretty well too. Now, another super important one is the command shift F, right? So find inside the entire project. What I typically do is double click on the word, copy it with a command C, command shift F, type it in. And sometimes adding a parenthesis after something will help you find like all instances of where this thing was called. Okay, so that's, that'll show me all of the like places that this thing is called. You can also right click on this and say, go to references. This is also a shift F12. So if highlight it, and then shift F12. That'll load up a little panel here, and that'll show you all the different places that's basically doing a redirect. Okay, so that's kind of important to um, understand that shortcut. And that's useful if like you have a function that you don't know if you're even using it anymore, like you could simply just do that and figure out, okay, where in the project is this used? It's used in like one or two places. Maybe you can refactor it away or you can simplify it and not even need it anymore. Like I mentioned in the beginning, Command P for fuzzy searching is very useful. Um, but if you look up here, you can actually do an at symbol and that'll give you all of the symbols slash variables that are defined, right? So if I want to go to user ranked, there's a variable right there. If I want to go to user, that'll take you straight to that. So if you're in a file and you already kind of know like you want to find a variable, like let's say you're down here, you can just simply copy that, type in that and go straight to it. Or again, you can just command click it and that'll take you straight to it very useful. Now, as far as like editing the code, command D is something I use all the time. So command D, what this allows you to do is I can just like click on the word or like some set of symbols that I want to refactor. Like, let's say I want to replace 80 to something else. I do command D, command D, and I can just change it like that. Super useful. It's a lot faster than like doing a control F and then having to go down here and replace it. Um, like that works too, but it's obviously not as useful as just going like this. Okay works for anything, right? So you can just do this, go to the front of the line, replace this and say other. And now you've just replaced like three places. Super useful to get used to that one. So another really useful one is options up and down. So if your cursor is on a line, you can move that line or you can move multiple lines down if you want to, right? I find that very useful. And usually it's like if I'm trying to write a new if statement. So like, let's pretend that this redirect was not in an if statement, okay? And then for some reason, I'm like, you know what? I need to put this in an if statement. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll start with an if statement. So if not user, and then I'll do my curly braces, that'll automatically add in the ending curly brace. So instead of having to go and like delete it, and then go and indent this, like that was like three steps. So what I do instead is I just indent, go like that and save, right? I guess that was still three steps. But the idea is that like, you can just drag a curly brace down if you want to like encompass more. Um, you can also just highlight stuff and move it up. It's good to get used to that. Um, you don't use it as often, but knowing that it's there can help you like refactor code and implement code much faster. All right, another one I use all the time is cutting a line. So this is just Command X on Mac. 
you just do a command X and that'll cut the entire line out. And sometimes what I do is I'll cut out like a whole section. So like, let's just grab this, I'll cut that out and I'll paste it in, right? So I guess it's just command cut. So it's nothing special about that. But sometimes if you're doing quick refactoring, you just delete that. It's faster than highlighting the code and deleting it. I just go ahead and just, you know, move my cursor around. I want to delete a couple lines, do that. So command X, very useful when deleting code. So if you're the type of developer who likes to use the mouse or trackpad like I do, using option click on Mac allows you to multi-select the various lines, right? So this is very useful if you want to like add a bunch of things to the end of words or whatnot. So for example, if I did like an array here and then I said like, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then let's say I forgot to put my comma. I could simply just command click a couple places and then put my comma. That works as well. Another shortcut, command D, go to the end of the line, do that. That works as well. So like now you have like the option to do various things. You can edit these as much as you want. So get used to the multi-select because if you ever deal with like JSON or data entry, it's very easy to like pick and choose where you want to delete stuff and add stuff. And if you have that cursor doing that same action in multiple places, it just makes it much more efficient. So some other commands that are really useful is going to a particular line. And this is more useful if you're like pair programming or coding with someone else who says go to line like 56 or you have an error in your console. And for some reason, you can't just command click it in your console and you have to like actually go to a line. You do a, a control G and you can just type in the line number. So if I say like 52, that'll check you straight there, right? Or if I want to go to like line two to the imports, I can do that. Um, doing a command up arrow and down arrow is very good for like going to the top and the bottom of the file. So sometimes if I'm doing something and I need to just go to the imports, just do a command up and that'll take you straight there. Also command left arrow and right arrow. So you want to go to the end of the line, you do a right arrow with a command or you do a command with the left arrow. Okay. And this is sometimes faster than I actually have to like move your cursor over. And if you're a Vim user and you're watching this, you're probably laughing because like you probably have all these Vim shortcuts, but I like using the trackpad when I code. I just feel like I have to do a bunch of clicking anyway with all these different like things. So using some type of hybrid of like learning a bunch of shortcuts and command clicking where I need to can often be faster. Like if my cursor is already here and I need to get to this period after snippet, or I could just go up here with my cursor and like, that's it. Right. Um, but sometimes if you're already like at a certain line, your cursor is already you know, blinking at somewhere and I want to get over to command. So I would say, uh, don't be afraid of using your find command. So that's command F that bring out your find because you can actually use this to quickly navigate your file, right? So if I wanted to go to like get current user, I get to say command F get current user and I'm there, right? So if you actually know exactly the token that you're looking for or like kind of descending and then when you close the, uh, the find you're there, right? So find index, find many. Okay. I'm already there. That's very useful. Get used to using find to help you navigate your code base. Now, some beginners might not know about this, but there's an outlines drop down here, and this will actually tell you like all of your different variables and functions that you have declared. So for example, there's a function in this file called get user snippet count. You can go to it and you can see there's a variable called users as declared. And there's also some other stuff going on here, which I'm guessing these are like options or something, but at least getting to a function quick using the outline can be very beneficial. And if you want to go straight to like, um, a named variable, you can do that or just get a quick overview of all the different variables that are in a function. This outline thing, I usually keep it closed all the time, but honestly, I think it's actually kind of useful and having it open and remember to keeping it open could be kind of, um, important. And I think that's all the shortcuts I, uh, I use obviously getting good at the trackpad. Like if you can go and like very precisely highlight the things that you want, it can just make you better. But that takes a while to get used to. If you're the type of person who likes using a mouse or a trackpad, I use a trackpad when I code. I don't like using a mouse because then your hands like going back and forth all the time. I always code on my MacBook. The trackpad is right there. So like I can quickly just go from like typing or I can just go and like use my mouse. Hopefully you've learned at least one new shortcut from watching this video. If you didn't learn anything new, then that means you're probably already a pretty good developer. And uh, I congratulate you on that. But if you enjoyed watching this, give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. Like always, I have a Discord channel that you're welcome to join. If you want to find a place to hang out with some other developers or ask some questions. Have a good day and happy coding.